Hey, Tom, how's it going? How are you doing? Uh, pretty good, pretty what, good. What have you been up to? Still in that ventilation stuff? Yeah, I still do that once in a while. Retirement's treating you all right? Yeah, well, it is, but I'm having a hard time breathing. Really? Yeah. Probably that dust I sucked in when I was 18, 19, 20 years old when I started mining. Yeah, it turns out those big contaminants that we've known about for years are harming people in the long term, right? Uh, we're starting to see now with the statistics that uh, there's more people dying from occupational disease than there are from traumatic fatalities like falls of ground or rock bursts. We used to try and keep all that dust down, but you know, who knew back in those days? Yeah. We would have probably done a better job if we knew. Yeah, like uh, a lot of people don't realize how much dust is actually generated from a blast. Um, have you ever seen a video of what a blast looks like? Let's see what it looks like. Let's check this out. There are several respirable hazards that can be found in a mine. Some of those include silica dust, diesel exhaust, nitrogen dioxide, and radon gas. The creation of silica dust during blasting, mucking, or conveyance processes can expose workers to levels well above the occupational exposure limit if not controlled. The dust is inhaled through the nose or mouth and it travels down the air passages to the lungs where particles can become lodged in the alveoli. Alveoli are those small air sacs deep inside your lungs that allow you to breathe. Over time, as the silica dust is inhaled, it remains trapped in your lungs causing scarring of the alveoli. As your exposure and time progresses, this scarring can impair your ability to breathe and can lead to certain occupational diseases, such as silicosis or lung-related cancers. Employers are responsible for ensuring that all hazards are assessed and controlled, depending on their potential impact for health and safety. Employers must also ensure that standards, policies, procedures, and work practices contain the necessary controls to protect workers from harmful amounts of contaminants. Employees have a role to play in this as well. By following proper work practices and procedures, such as washing the muck pile down during mucking operations and ensuring the area is properly ventilated, workers can protect themselves and others against harmful contaminants. Diesel particulate matter, otherwise known as diesel exhaust, must be controlled in order to ensure workers are not exposed to this harmful contaminant at a high concentration. The reason why this is is because it has the ability to mutate the DNA in your cells. As the high concentration of diesel particulate is generated from the engine, and once it's inside the lungs, the mutation in the body cells can occur and this is what leads to cancer in the long term. This happens because of the diesel particulate's ability to mutate the DNA in your cells, causing normally healthy cells to turn into cancerous cells and eventually developing into tumors. The latency period for this is 10, 20, or 30 years. So the assumption that no signs or symptoms means that everything is alright couldn't be farther from the truth. In Ontario, there are airflow requirements for diesel-powered equipment. There must be at least 0.06 cubic meters per second for each kilowatt of engine power. That's equivalent to 100 cubic feet per minute or 100 CFM per brake horsepower. This amount of airflow sufficiently provides enough air to dilute and reduce not only the concentration of toxic substance from diesel exhaust emissions, but also other contaminants that could be in the work atmosphere like radon gas. There are a number of engineering controls for limiting diesel particulate matter emissions. One very good control involves the installation and use of diesel particulate filters on diesel engine exhaust systems. Other examples include the use of operator cabs or the use of cleaner engines such as tier 4 engines. Administrative controls such as re-entry protocols after blasting, regular maintenance of diesel equipment such as carbon monoxide emission testing, and many more are conducted primarily to reduce the exposure of a worker to contaminants. The highest level control is elimination because the exposure to the contaminant is completely eliminated. This includes controls like replacing diesel equipment with battery powered equipment, eliminating the source of diesel exhaust altogether. Another control is the use of central blasting, where workers can blast from the surface instead of underground, eliminating their exposure to silica dust and blast contaminants. Employers are required to educate workers about these harmful contaminants. Employers must also ensure that the contaminant levels are below the time-weighted average, which is deemed to be a safe level. By law, employers are required to perform ventilation surveys and air monitoring on a regular basis to confirm air quality and contaminant levels.
How about those air sampling devices? Huh. You mean them blue things that we used stuff to wear? We put them on and wear them in the cage and go down to heading and drilling or whatever. You threw the monitor up on the wall or on the screen or yep. dash to the scoop or whatever. Yeah, exactly, because they're not looking for the screen's exposure or the scoop's exposure. They want to know the worker's exposure, right? That's why it's important that you uh, wear the monitor within a couple inches of your mouth. So if you put it uh, in your breathing zone, then they can get an accurate measurement of what your personal exposure is. The monitor is there just to confirm see that. See if you're doing that. Yeah, to see if it's going, if everything is going properly, and that you're not harming people, right? Because you want to do it over your career so you can yeah. uh, enjoy your retirement years and, uh, kids, and your and your kids and kids. Yeah. Whole Hopefully, everybody's a little smarter today, yeah, know a little bit better about the process and what the, what you're actually looking for. Well, on our road to zero harm, right, we want to make sure that people's health is uh, taken care of. Yep. Yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. Well, I'm out of coffee. You want uh, uh, another one? No, I should be all right. Uh, it was on me, so. That's fine.